We are continuing our baptism and communion review from 218. Um, we're on the second page, which is about communion. So let's go to the first question. When was communion instituted? I put a number of different dates here. Um, the first one is the proper answer. It was on Monday, Thursday, which was the Jewish Passover. And to the Jews, that would have been called Friday because their day started when the sun set. So it was started in Jerusalem by Jesus at the Passover as he changed the Passover where the angel passed over Israel. And this was a remembrance of that. He changed that Passover of the angel of death to his passing over our sins as he destroyed our sins on the cross and gave to us life from the tomb. So communion was instituted on Monday, Thursday during the Jewish Passover. Um, the other dates I gave, the first one was when the Magna Carta was created. That's 1215 at Running Mead. Uh, the second one was when um, Columbus sailed the ocean blues when he left Spain. It was in 1492, August 3rd, from Palos de la Frontera. And the final one is the landing on the moon, of, of the first landing on the moon. Um, and so that was July 20th, 1969. Anyway, the answer, though, is A, Monday, Thursday. Second question, what gifts are given in communion? The same gifts that are given in baptism. If you get the one answer right, you should get the other answer right. Forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Okay? And it's not holy energy. It's not electric, electric food. Um, it's not a re-sacrifice of Christ. He doesn't pay the price again. He paid the Christ once for all on the cross. Um, and it's definitely more than just food, bread, eaten for the good of the body. The next question, what are all the elements physically present in communion? Bread, wine, and in with and under them, Jesus' body and Jesus' blood. So you have four elements, uh, two of which are visible to our eyes, and the two which we know are there by faith, by the indwelling of the Spirit and his giving us the ability to believe and trust in the promises of Jesus. Um, so I then give some other, I divide up the elements, and then I say fire, earth, air, and water is my Joe coin. Who is to take communion? Sinners in need of Jesus' forgiveness and strength. Um <clears throat> those who trust in the promises Christ made about the Lord's Supper and those who can examine themselves are all true. So the answer is D, all of the above. Uh, it's only sinners who come to communion because otherwise you don't need communion, right? Um, those who come to communion should be those who know what they're eating. We're warned that if you eat it unworthily, which is not knowing the promise of Christ and not trusting in the promise of Christ, then you eat it to your own damnation. So um, when you come to the communion, you're saying, Christ, I'm a sinner, save me in my unbelief, and he saves you, and it's good. But if you come and you say, this isn't really a gift of Jesus, then it's not, and you shouldn't be there. And finally, uh, the Bible says you should examine yourself before you go to communion. You should say, do I believe the same things that this fellowship believes? If I don't believe the same things this fellowship believes, then I shouldn't go to communion. Even if I'm a Christian, but we have different beliefs about what's occurring here at the table, for instance, um, I shouldn't be going and eating with this fellowship. I should eat with the fellowship that believes the same things I do. And sometimes I have people in the congregation who are from a different fellowship, uh, married generally to someone who is from this fellowship, and they abstain from communion, where they'll come to the rail and I'll give them a blessing. And that's good. Uh, because they're part of us in Christ, but they don't share quite the same doctrine that we share. Moving on to the next question. What does it mean that communion is a fellowship of the altar? Um, and it's A, those who take communion together share a common set of beliefs, which I just talked about, right? So we believe that baptism should happen with infants. We believe um, that we have closed communion. We believe that, the, that this is a real gift of Christ, that he made a promise, 
We don't believe in transubstantiation. We don't believe it's just symbolic. Um, we don't believe that baptism is only at the age of accountability. So there are different beliefs between us and the Catholics and the Baptists, for instance. Uh, they're Christians. They know Jesus Christ. They trust in him as their savior. So we're going to join together in heaven. But while we're on earth, strengthened by the gift of Christ, we're also strengthening each other. And we get a confirmation. Ooh, confirmation. We get a confirmation that those by us also believe the same things. We're not alone. That we have a closer fellowship even in faith with those beside us. Um, and so in communion, not only do we receive the gift of Jesus given by his promise, we also see, receive the gift of knowing that we are in a community of believers who believes the same things that we do. And then we can stand firm on those beliefs because we know that they were uh, revealed to us by God and given as a gift in Scripture. <clears throat> How old do you need to be to take communion? Eh, old enough to examine yourself. So the first, the first answer, no specific age is given, but no old enough to examine our, yourself and to know what communion is. Um, the others are ages people may use, but really... The Bible doesn't tell us how old to be. It does tell us that we have to be able to know what's happening. And next question, if someone does not believe communion is a gift of Jesus, as he said, is it safe for them? Paul makes this clear. He says, no, they, they drink the blood to their damnation. They eat the body to their damnation. So if you go to Jesus' table where he's giving you a gift and you reject the gift while you're taking it, if you basically say, oh, this isn't any good. So someone gives you a Christmas present. Oh, look at this. I didn't get the iPhone I wanted. This is just an Android. Well, you have really now um, hurt the person who has given you the gift. Uh, you despise the gift itself. And because of that, you are likely to receive the spanking on the bottom. Um, if you still get spanked on the bottom. Um, because you have been, you've, you've been given something out of love, out of grace, and you've rejected that great gift. The same comes with communion, but even more so. All right. This should have you ready for the test on Friday. Hopefully we will be in person for that test. Uh, Thank you very much.